Thank you. It's great to have all of you here tonight. It's usually the first step. Like being here means you're interested in at least learning about this topic. And really, to cut to the chase, we're just two people who feel lucky to do what we do. We very much enjoy our work on a daily basis. Um, we, whether it's teaching a class or talking one-on-one -on -one to to someone, um, we just we feel really privileged to be to have somehow fallen into this line of work and and to. Um, it's very much evolving, and we'll share a lot of that with you tonight. But I know Jane always wants to know, kind of starting off the night with how many of you in this room, show us a hand, how many are currently exercising? That's kind of what we like to see, what we're working with. Holy moly. All right, good. Tell me some of the stuff you're doing. Aquasize. Aquasize? Good. Walking. Walking. Okay. Excellent. Good. Uh, team fitness. Team fitness. Great. Good. Anybody? All good so far. Yes. We pump, we pump and bike and treadmill and uh, strength training. Okay. Good. Good. Yes. Yeah. Good. Great. Good. Good. Yeah. Yoga. Yoga. Great. Love it. Love it all. I'm going to shock you by saying sitting. I'm 90 in a wheelchair much of the time, but I do move. Do you move around while you're sitting? <laughs> I think a little different. Yeah. <laughs> Reluctant movement. You could do, you, we, we could, yeah, you, you, that's okay. You can do a lot if seated, so. That's excellent. Yeah. Got to keep on doing it. Good. We always like to just get a sense of who we're working with, kind of what's going on in the room before diving into all these different topics. So, Joan did a pretty great job of, of throwing out all of these pointers, but we thought we'd say, you know, who are we, why are we here, why did they pull us in tonight? Um, she mentioned a lot of this. We, ten years ago, we launched into this, this impact program. It was integrating medical professionals and certified trainers. Um, we had the, the luck of being philanthropically sponsored with a local Bay Area health club chain. They're called Western Athletic Clubs. The ones in your region, although they're not here, but they're um, Courtside Los Gatos, and there's a Pacific Athletic Club in Redwood City, and then Sunnyvale has uh, Decathlon. And we were running this cancer and exercise program in all of these clubs um, by the end of its duration. We ran that program for about four years, and then companies sold, we lost philanthropy, and that's why we started Sunflower Wellness, because we just had too much in motion and too many people in, involved. And, um, and so we were lucky enough to kind of connect with the group and we've been able to carry on. Um, with Sunflower Wellness, we currently run our programs at, in Marin, Bay Club Marin. We're in San Francisco at Bay Club San Francisco. We've been able to help with a lot of the stuff going on at UCSF, um, kind of part of the connection, helping to pull things together here. We run, like at Bay Club Marin, we have six classes a week for the cancer community, Pilates, yoga. I do a strength and balance class. Um, I'm missing one. Cycling. We just added cycling recently, and um, at, at the Bay Club in San Francisco, another sort of full body core workout, and an aqua class. So, you know, we really are trying to inside of this. We do kind of two things. We do the exercise counseling, where we really just consult with patients individually to get a sense of who are you, what's going on, what's your diagnosis, what are you doing or not doing, why, why not. And we try to help put together a plan and map out a goal and get people in motion, and then our bigger goal would be to continue to expand in, in communities and to help start classes with, you know, qualified instructors to keep exercise safe and effective and efficient. So um, we, yeah, so we wear many hats. We do personal training. We are group exercise instructors at times. We run the Sunflower programs. We work at UCSF with the exercise counseling. We do lectures. So I don't know. We kind don't of sit cover, still either. To, yeah. Um, just in case you're wondering, ACSM is the American College of Sports Medicine. And for trainers, that actually is a gold standard. Um, and also seeing a need for the increasing need to ma maintain education and keep people moving, they created a certification. Um, and there, let me tell you that those exams are not easy, but we're both very proud to say that we were among the first 60 in the country to pass. Um, so that's a very good thing. And as far as UCSF, we, we were very integral in, in helping start, Reagan had mentioned earlier, but start exercise counseling. And it has proven to be an exceptional opportunity for us, of course, but for everyone that we work with. And people are, have the ability to self-refer as long as you're a patient there, or oncologists or nurse practitioners or whomever can send individuals to us and we can help either redesign an exercise program, start an exercise program, and we follow through with people from the start when they come to see us till when they don't want to hear from us anymore, and that does happen. 
but we have some lovely stories to share about that as well. Yeah. We also have been pretty good with uh, collaborating with the physical therapy departments at UCSF, and we've, we have a cancer exercise manual that we put together there with PT, and so we have great referral pathways, you know, working with them when needed and sending people our way. So that's been a nice journey along the way, too, with, with that program. Uh, moving on, so that tells you who we are. So why are we here tonight? Anybody have any expectations before we get going? You must have a reason to come. We're going to exercise a little. We're going to talk about it a lot. Hopefully we'll, you'll leave motivated. motivated. Yeah. Motivated, okay. Yeah, that's I want to know how much is enough to help myself. Okay, we'll cover that. Anything else that we should be aware of before we start? With the rain weather so much, um, I couldn't kind of get to the gym. Sometimes exercise would be like at home. Okay, great. Perfect. In a chair. Yeah. We can help you with that, Joy. <laughs> yeah, true. All right, so the benefits are, are endless, and the, the research and data are coming out more and more on how valuable exercise is as an intervention. So we're busier than ever. Uh, that's a good thing. We want to talk about what a well-rounded program is, and we'll highlight some of those things. And for those of you that are looking for motivation, I call people up on the phone. <laughs> Yes, she does. You, you laugh now. I <laughs> know. Yes, she's yeah. heard that before. I know. Okay. So you were, you all, like people, uh, oh, no, Jane's calling me. It's yeah. true. They hide. People hide around corners. and it's, I've had stories to tell. Um, you all have all started your programs, but for those of you that might not be up at full force yet or you still might just put your toe in the water, we can help you get some direction there. And we're going to help you in what to do. So I always like to throw a little humor in the loop if you haven't figured that out yet. Um, we had fun kind of looking at different, there's so many just random exercise slides. You like this one, right, Joan? I mean, Holly. Uh, so yeah, the only diet shake the doctor recommends, that, or that I recommend, is the shake your booty makes when you exercise. So you know, just, we thought that was kind of funny to just get moving. <laughs> All right. so. Exercise has got a lot to do with a lot of things, and um, we, we do look at the cardiovascular health as, uh, in the cardiac rehab field as kind of the pioneers for the exercise relationship with disease. Aside from that, we see a redu reduction in cardiac events, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, and rates of recurrence and mortality. We do have data and research out. Now it's in writing, which is why we're becoming more validated on, on, on how significantly you can change the rates for yourself. And also assist in managing obesity, depression, bone density. We all have to be concerned about that. And anxiety. It's never too late. I always like to say you start where you start, you know, if that's a block, it's a block and we'll get you to walk the block and then we'll add on slowly. So, and I think especially when going through different uh, phases of treatment with cancer, you know, when you have different times, sometimes things are really challenging and it's hard to get out of your house and other times, you know, you're feeling really energetic and strong. I mean, it, it's, it's different, but sometimes a roller coaster and we just try, really try to encourage people to, you know, anything is better than nothing. So if that's, you know, turning on the timer on your stove for 10 minutes and turning on music that makes you happy and just moving, twisting, shaking, bending, you know, anything. Um, and then you build on. So I, I think, you know, just know that, again, it's never too late to start and we can always look at building blocks and add on to whatever it is that you're doing or not doing. Did you hear when Reagan said anything's better than nothing? <laughs> okay, just checking. <laughs> physical just benefits. Just checking. Um, you know, some of the physical benefits here improved with uh, rest and sleep. Uh, it's known that people with regular exercise programs usually have less problem with insomnia and that sort of thing, and can just sleep heavier kind of throughout the course of the night. Uh, aerobic fitness, so just overall cardiovascular support, strong heart, helping uh, keep, you know, oxygen and blood flowing through the body. Flexibility and range of motion, we'll dive into that more later. We'll get into the demonstrations. You'll believe it or not, you can actually do a lot of things with the balloon for flexibility and range of motion, but really just working with your joints and moving them in all of the directions they're supposed to move. Uh, muscle tone and strength, so that's where we get into more of the resistance training program and talking about different factors to help build the, the muscles and bones and joints and to create more stability in the body. Um, increased oxygen to the brain and the tissues. Uh, that's important. Yeah. Keep your brain up there. 
You do need your brain. Yeah, and I understand the next lecture we were hearing is about memory. So believe it or not, there's been, there have been a lot of research studies on exercise, and especially like dynamic programs or programs with more variables and just the way you move your body. So using your whole body and doing activities that you know, involve multiple muscle groups and just that type of blood flow and coordination actually helps with overall brain health as we age. It also can help a lot with balance. Uh, exercise studies have really proven that it can help reduce fatigue and just overall improved tolerance to your cancer treatment. Uh, so with radiation chemotherapy, I mean, we know a lot of the doctors we work with, um, some of the Smith Integrative was mentioned, and also some of the docs at um, UC. And uh, I work also with Marin General and their group. And uh, they will say they noticeable difference when they have a person in the chemotherapy chair who's exercising versus someone who's not, just in tolerance and in just the way, you know, just the, the way that they're um, engaged energy levels as well as overall just appearance. So. Um, they always can say, oh, you know, you've been working with exercise or you're on an exercise program. It's pretty noticeable to them kind of comparing A and B. I'd like to add a note on the reduced fatigue piece. If you happen to be in radiation or know of anyone that is, one of the best things that that individual can do is cardiovascular exercise, which can help fight that typically uh, cumulative fatigue effect that goes on throughout the course, typically six weeks of fatigue. Of uh, radiation. So walk, walk, walk. Emotional benefits. All right. So we're going to talk about the positive changes in self esteem, your mood, your relaxation, your feelings of independence. That, that can be quite a battle for people that are in treatment. Shift of focus from illness to wellness. That's another significant piece. And uh, we really like to go to lean on the ability to take control of something. There's so many things, as most of you know, that are out of your control once a diagnosis ha happens. But this is you can go walk, you can play with a balloon, you can go to a yoga class. So it really is that inner strength piece that that we help dig out. I think we get uh, the, the area that we're working in is partner sort of paralleling a lot of the nutrition focus within the, the you know, cancer programming in different centers. And if you think of those two things, they are, you have a choice. You can you know, educate yourself, you can learn, you can get ideas, and you can decide to make these changes with diet and nutrition as well as with exercise. And so um, it's been nice and we're working more and more with nutritionists and doing presentations and referring back and forth as well. Uh, sort of a piggyback effect, right? If you're doing one, then you're more likely to do another. I think sometimes if you exercise, then you might be, at least on a psychological level, you might think a little bit more about what you're going to eat after following a bout of exercise or, you know, vice versa. So um, I think that's something else that goes on with some of the emotional, emotional and psychological effects of, of exercise programming. Okay, one big message here. Get it? Avoid inactivity. <laughs> no. So the cancer exercise guidelines, they just came out a couple of years ago. Um, and uh, these were done by, they were based on the Department of Health and Human Services guidelines with a panel of experts across the country. They did review over 100 studies. Some of those, I think like 15 to 20 of them were, were you know, uh, active treatment and then the rest were, were post-treatment. But um, underlying belief that, you know, the, the, they start the whole guideline, uh, and anywhere you see it printed, it will always say avoid an activity. That is the, the underlying belief of cancer and exercise. And then, these are the guidelines that currently exist, and again, they are sort of new. I think they're, you know, they'll continue to, to uh, do studies in advance, but, um, uh, and again, so guidelines here, minimum. I mean, this would be sort of the, the, the baseline beginning, or at least, you know, try, and if you can't get here again, you, anything's better than nothing, so you start where you start. But aerobic activity, it's recommended to do 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise a week. Just a question, a couple of the aerobic exercise? Mm -hmm. yeah. Hold on, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll help you talk that through. So, um, yeah, you, I heard you say, you could break it down. I mean, you do a course of a week, you were saying, she was saying five, five days a week, 30 minutes, that's a good way to do it. So you can come up with different parameters on how to, to meet this goal. And, um, and, you know, it's always, again, kind of a starting point, a foundation line, and then you slowly add and build on as you progress and get stronger. Uh, strength training, it's suggested to do uh, two weekly sessions that include exercises for all the major muscle groups. And more and more, you know, believing that these uh, sort of bigger full body exercises, the more dynamic the exercise, the better for just overall neuro neurological uh, pathway recruitment as well as stability in the joints. And flexibility, you know, range of motion exercise, exercises, that sort of thing every day. 
So those are the current guidelines, cancer and exercise guidelines. So for some of you, that might be like, well, wow, I'm already doing that and so much more. For others, maybe, you know, maybe you're doing just about that and some maybe not quite, but um, that's sort of what we're here. Well, hopefully as, as the night progresses and we give more ideas and start talking about the different components, you can find a way to meet these guidelines and more. Yeah, yeah, we Stay can definitely, us. I think, um, we'll, we'll definitely save a lot of time for questions in the end, okay. and um, we, we can certainly pull the slide up again, or if you have, you know, a, a question, make a note, and, oh, yeah, but I, and we'll continue to dive into these different, the, the focuses, flexibility, aerobic, and, and strength training. So, um, as I mentioned, we took the ACSM exam, and we are now considered exercise specialists and exercise trainers. We also have a fellow trainer in the audience. I understand Don is also a mm -hmm. trainer at the Y. He's gone through an exercise specialist course in the country. So we have another trainer in our midst, which is always a great thing. Don't steal our stuff, Don. <laughs> <laughs> Sign of a good trainer is one that takes others' exercises. So um, some of the things that that we can provide uh, are, are different types of direction. If someone is in a certain or a particular part of treatment, whether that be radiation, post-surgery, there are concerns and issues that we pride ourselves on, on knowing that a trainer that might not have gone through the additional training can provide. There are highs and lows of treatment, as most of you or some of you, I'm sure, know per firsthand. So we have, we have to have a sensitivity on meeting you where you are that day. It's going to be a complete use of time, a useless time, use of time to ha go into a session and think that you're going to have this, I wrote this out, it's got to happen because that's the first thing we chuck typically is you do a check-in when you're, when you're meeting your, your client and it might not be the good day, then we do something else. Same is true for group exercise classes. As Holly and Joan um, were, were with me, they can, they can testify firsthand. I have a group of 50 or 20, 15 or 20 individuals of all ages, all stages, some post, some in treatment. I have to make magic happen, and, um, and, it, and it's really a fun thing to do, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to do that this evening. But again, a, a different type of sensibility for that kind of training. Yeah, I think exercise is a very, you know, individualized thing and, uh, you know, whether you're, you're dealing with concerns, contraindications, limitations that are specific to your cancer diagnosis or something from, you know, a car accident that was a few years ago, I mean, who knows? We all have a story in life and we've done things, maybe it's a, an old, you know, run, a, an ankle twist from a run or something that you're still struggling with. Um, so one of the key things here is, you know, in any sort of connection, seeking guidance with, you know, um, a, a trainer, a facility, a group, dynamic, you know, you have a voice and you, you can definitely communicate and say, you know, this is what's going on with me and, and, you know, make sure that the person is listening to you. And then in your first, you know, session with whether it's a class or a trainer or, or you know, it should feel right to you. Um, it shouldn't uh, set you back or if it feels like it's too much, you know, speak up, don't do more than don't, we always say, you know, never push to the point of pain. Sometimes with new movement patterns, discomfort is to be expected, but what's the line between discomfort and pain? So. I, I always say, you know, how does it feel while you're doing it? Pay attention to that. And then how does it feel in your recovery period 24 to 48 hours later? You know, is your body returning to normal? You're not having any delayed symptoms? Then usually that's, you know, green light and you can continue. So um, it's, you know, important to seek out qualified uh, professionals and at the same time, like, make sure that you are knowledgeable and sharing and expressing yourself in that relationship, however it evolves. Uh, research is pretty exciting in recent years. Uh, thankfully, <laughs> we've been sort of in the trenches for years and years with this work. It's very much an emerging field. Uh, luckily, a lot of the stuff that, uh, that a lot of the different um, research studies that have come out in the past few years are very compelling. And in the past few years, I'd say even you know going back to 2005 and 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 on, um, we recently had the chance to hear uh, this, his name's Lee Jones. He's from Duke Cancer uh, Duke Cancer Center, but. Pretty exciting. He has a website. It's Exercise Oncology. You might want to take the time to Google that and just look up some of the things that he's doing. He's definitely one of the, the leaders in this country with exercise and cancer-specific research, um, looking at all different cancers. I mean, not, he's, he's definitely got a, a nice variety in terms of, you know, colon and brain and, and breast and prostate. Um, 
And he is currently starting to look now, I mean, he's been looking at physiological, you know, the physical and even quality of life. He's been looking at that for years and years and years, but his newest focus and direction is going more on, um, with, you know, how does exercise affect the tumor? So he's in phase one of those studies, but within the next three or four years, he'll start, well, actually he says within the next two to three years, he'll start putting out some data, even from the preliminary state. So that's pretty exciting to see that finally science is advancing. We might get a better explanation of what's really going on. What's his name? Lee Jones. He's uh, out of, uh, and his website is Exercise Oncology. I think it's just exerciseoncology.com or something. If you, if you Googled Exercise Oncology, Lee Jones, you'd certainly find it. Lots of information on that website. Also on our Sunflower we Wellness website, um, we have uh, a research page or just with a lot. We, we do our best. We have some people that help us just sort of uh, keeping us up to date with research. Jane and I are constantly turned on to it, looking for it. So there's um, a lot of information there if you wanted to go. And we have like the full, uh, you know, link to the studies, like the full articles and reviews on the different interventions, as well as, um, you know, just the, the full detail, the full read on research studies. But we just did a, a took the time here to sort of hit a few bullet points. Um, this is a, a pretty large study that was done by Melinda Irwin. She's out of Yale in 2008. Ultimately here just proved that just from brisk walking, and I think with this study it was around 200, 220 minutes a week. I think that's sort of the parameter she was using. Um, it, it, uh, cancer diagnosis had an approximately 64% lower risk of death in inactive women. So for women, women who were involved in the study and actively walking, just walking, again, we're not even throwing in all these other variables or components, but pretty major, you know, drop in your, uh, your risk of death and, and, and versus, you know, active being versus inactive. And her studies were the, really the first that came out that really started to validate what we were doing. And when that, when that came out, we were able to say, using exercise as an intervention, you can deter recurrence and mortality for breast cancer up to 50%, and for colon cancer, 60%. When I first started to say that, it was like, it made me a little nervous. But she's got the data and research to support it, and it's now proven, so that's why we're here. Yeah, she, she's just embarking on a new study as well, and um, again, very driven. Uh, she, there's also a guy out of Canada, Cornelia. He, he's done a lot of the research. These two focus a lot with just breast cancer studies, but they, they're leading the, leading the work with, or leading the field with all of that. Um, but some pretty compelling and, and motivational information out there. Uh, this, this other one, um, again, 2008, um, it shows that physical activity has an important benefit on survival regardless of how long ago a breast cancer diagnosis was made. So that's where we sort of get to, you know, it's never too late to start, just kind of it should continue to motivate you that just, if you haven't been exer exercising, you know, let's start now because there's a lot of good reason that whether you're talking about, you know, the cancer specific data or just in general what exercise does for body and overall wellness. Uh, quite a large study with, with 15,000 women, those who engaged in moderate and high levels of cardiorespiratory fitness demonstrated a 33% and 55% lower risk, respectively, of dying of breast cancer. So again, just another, you know, showing really high percentages of, of decrease, decrease in overall death rates and increasing lifespan um, following breast cancer diagnosis. And then the total sessions, uh, doctor visits, were decreased by 60%. These were, this was more specific to lymphedema with uh, uh, decreasing the, the visits uh, in, concern, or in consideration with lymphedema. So there's a, a study in 2009 by Katie Schmitz. And she's actually per, was involved in the cancer and exercise guidelines as well as this training course that Jane and I, a webinar that we took. Um, so she's another person in the, in the field that's really uh, diving on, on research and really trying to change a lot of the ways that the things were seen. And her, one of her focuses at the time was lymphedema and looking at, um, you know, just really trying to decrease some of the fear around lymphedema and encouraging people to exercise because, in fact, by increasing stronger, by um, having stronger muscles, by using the muscles, it created more of an effect and a better pumping action through the lymphatic system. Is there, is there any reason why uh, these all refer to breast cancer? Uh, you know, breast cancer is sort of, we have another slide going, going next that brings up a few different uh, cancers, but breast cancer and, and prostate cancer sort of lead the field currently with a lot of the research, although, I, I just now, and in, in, in recent, more recent years, we're starting to see more with, with colon and brain and different lymphomas. Um, so, and again, Lee Jones is, is doing a lot of that. A lot of the studies are inconclusive at this point, but they're and just the lead kind of the, 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 the percentage of breast cancer studies that are out there, pretty tremendous. Again, on our website, we have more of, we have a, a bigger variety, a whole, whole, you know. I and know. for starting these, the populations are bigger and more identified initially than other smaller cancers. Yeah. So. Okay. 
you want to continue on? So colorectal cancer patients who increased their activity levels before diagnosis had an approximately 50% reduction in both colorectal cancer specific and all cause mortality. Um, so again, just kind of looking at a few different populations. Um, study of women with breast cancer who were physically active and consumed at least five servings of fruits and vegetables each day dropped their 10-year mortality rate by half, jumping up to the colon cancer survivors who walked six or more hours a week and average pace at an average pace showed a 47% improvement in disease-free survival compared with inactive patients. Um, one of the things that's hard, I think, with these studies, you know, it's uh, the ver different variables that come into play and in kind of isolating a group. Uh, and, and I know that, that it's definitely the field is advancing and they're starting to find ways to isolate groups and to just focus on one variable opposed to a lot of the studies that have been done have been like pretty massive in terms of some looking at food and exercise and then there are just too many variables to really make strong points. But again, the, the bigger point here is that it, it is really advancing, it is pretty compelling, and especially in recent years, I think incredibly motivational. You know, it, should, it, it pr could provide a, a pretty strong link of motivation. Components of a, so here we go. So we'll jump now into talking more specifically about the components of a good wellness program. Um, we all have that one. Yeah, we do have a handout that you'll, you'll take home. Just as a reminder, we threw together this, this little chart as well as the um, cancer exercise guidelines. So I just like to say to people, you know, when you're looking at the course of a week and the activities that you choose to do, um, you know, uh, I think trying to make sure that you have aerobic exercise, and again, you know, kind of going back to the guidelines, 150 minutes or more a week. Um, strength training and guidelines, you know, current cancer guidelines say two times a week. Uh, flexibility, range of motion every day, you know, so just whether, you know, finding an activity, whether it's a class structure or, or getting a stretch series or something, uh, 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 some sort of something at home that works for you with a foam roller, or there are a lot of things we'll show you a few tonight that can be done with, with body without any object. You know, there are different, you know, yoga, there are a lot of different things that can play in and they, they sort of cross uh, different, different, you know, um, avenues here. Relaxation, we always like to speak about the importance of, you know, adding, making sure that Relaxing. I think we all live in a busy world and we rush around and, and it's easy to get stressed and to lose sight of yourself. And even, you know, sometimes with the breath we're just too rushed. And so trying to find something that really kind of calms you, makes you happy, makes you feel good. Just a little bit of that slow down. I mean, we all need to slow down, I think, at times. So I like, we like to include that in our overall exercise mixer and balance. And we also have a sheet in your chart. There's a great article on the importance of balance, check your balance. It has a few ideas of a couple of different activities that you can do, but um, as we age, neural pathways start shutting down. Um, we, we just sort of, we, we, without training or without you know, doing proper things to continue to stimulate stability in the joints and the, path, the neural pathways in the foot, it's, uh, you can, can lose, I mean, you, you hear sometimes in the aging bracket, there's a, a lot of the, the movement right now with healthy aging is, is fall prevention. So just really trying to focus more on creating better stability in the body and, and strength, the joints, the muscles. Um, I like the closing of this article says, when it comes to balance, I've never learned, or I've learned it's either use it or lose it. And I truly believe that. If we're not using it and, practice it and practicing it and trying it, it really does start to shut down. And simplest thing, you know, maybe walking along the street and just an, an uneven place in the, the concrete, you know, you might trip where if you had better training or if you'd work with your body a little bit more, you might be less likely to trip and fall or even to twist an ankle or, you know, all sorts of day-to-day -day interactions, but um, ultimately just trying to create safety. So we'll dive into more of the components here, or I'm um, no, sorry, go on, ways to quantify. So here we go. Cancer exercise guidelines, we've gone over those a couple times so far, and, and I want to emphasize Please don't let a, a number of 150 minutes deter you from doing something. You want to work up, start where you are. If that's five minutes, then let's, let's roll with that. Working up to it, it's not for everyone. You, we just increase and, and get you moving. Rating, it's RPE is a rating of perceived exertion. Now that's a, a relatively easy um, scale to use with people. It's simply a scale of one to 10. One, you're, you're right about there right now. 10, you're probably looking at the face of a cardiovascular incident or something in that, that category. So <clears throat> you, when you're walking, for instance, a, a four or five would be kind of a, a little bit of a stroll. A six would be a little bit further, a little bit faster. You might not want to go through the Declaration of Independence. 
seven, you're probably going to pass on that. Um, you should be able to talk while you're doing that. Another, another quantifying uh, tool is METS, metabolic equivalent. We'll, we'll explain that next. And then, of course, how is it working for you? Because if you're picking some, an activity that isn't appealing to you, the likelihood of you, of you pursuing that or doing that is pretty much close to nil. So try, for those of you that are already even involved in programs, go try other things. If someone wants you to go line dance, go, go try it. Can't, can't hurt. You might find a passion for it. Another way to move. And then a couple of other, you know, they're, they're, these aren't, we weren't trying to put them all up here, but, you know, the calorie counting is another way. There are a lot of different devices you can wear. Um, uh, heart monitors just to, to monitor intensity of cardiovascular exercise. You get a target bipolar, it means one of the brands that you, it's a strap under the chest and with a, a wristband watch that can track your heart rate and can really help you keep an accurate count on your, your uh, intensity levels with cardiovascular activity. Pedometers we'll speak to a little bit more, but you know, so counting your steps. So um, there are a lot of little tools that are handy and even in recent, you know, recent times there's so many devices now with our you know, if it's a smartphone or whatever it might be, an iPhone, it, there's just so many different tracking devices now that you can download. A lot of them are free, um, and, and some of them, you know, I think they, they, I've never seen one that, that costs much more than 10 or $15. But even if it's just, you know, putting your program in, your ideal outline in, and then going in and entering in whatever you did, it, they're, they're, some of them are pretty great at tracking your resistance training programs, your walking programs. I mean, there's so many different things out there that exist. And these don't even have to be on, on little handheld devices. You can also do this online just through different programs on, on, on the internet. So really here, we're, we're trying to just put up different ways to quantify, but also uh, sort of helping with the overall goal setting. And then a lot, some people are into tracking and seeing progress and that sort of thing. So a lot of ways to, different ways to do it. Um, a little more of an explanation on, on METS. And it's just, we bring this up because a lot of the, um, a lot of the studies will reference, uh, they use just because of the clinical labs, exercise physiology labs and such, they track a lot. And, Mets, I don't know, did any of you read Anti-Cancer? Um, no, David Serban, Shriver, yes, some. He, we, we, we pulled some of this from, well, the next couple of slides where we use the activity charts, but um, he referenced this in turn when he, with his uh, chapter on exercise or focus on exercise. So there's another way of calculating, another way of creating quantity or quantifying exercise. Um, so it's a met metabolic equivalent, a measure of exercise. It's related to the intensity of activity and oxygen consumed. So as Jane was saying, sitting still, because it's calculated as one met, and then um, to go to a second met is twice the amount of oxygen you do in a particular activity other than being at rest. And uh, we've got a few graphs or charts here. Again, we pulled these just from, from that book just to give some different reference points, but online there are lots of different tools if you wanted, you know, wanted to get a, a parameter around how many. So daily activities, you know, for just, just kind of have to run through the whole list here, but from sitting at one to walking the dog, that's kind of at a leisurely pace. Um, three, vacuuming, three and a half, uh, raking the lawn, four, mowing the lawn with a power mower, four and a half. So just to sort of show you that these things can count towards overall um, quantifying with exercise in the course of a week or a day. Um, mild activities goes more to uh, you know, like canoeing, for example, at, at you know, 2.5. Walking at a two mile per hour or, th or three kilometer pace, that's a 2.5. Dancing, ballroom dancing, so again, like a little bit slower, not as intense as maybe salsa or zumba or something <laughs> like that. Um, three. And you just this. Sit and, and watch television for one. Sit and watch and, television. And, uh, sit and sew for one and a half. So yeah. ballroom dancing really doesn't add much, does it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a different way of looking at it. True. <laughs> True, true. Well, what they, are those they, dancing they, with the stars doing after all, huh? <laughs> it triples it, yeah, and when you see it, it will. So then we kind of go into, again, a few more modern activities. So cycling, leisurely paced cycling, 3.5. Swimming, slow crawl, or something of the sort, 4.5. Chopping wood, 4.9. Four, four so, um, I mean, we're happy to uh, email these slides to you, so you have them if anyone wants to follow up. If, uh, again, these are uh, online, mm -hmm. available too. Um, tennis, you know, doubles, which is not as, as active as singles, five, uh, just kind of run through swimming at a, at a you know, a diff a more of like a, probably a racing pace or not even racing pace, but just at a lap pace or something, a seven. Walking at five miles per hour takes it up to eight, and then you get into more sustainable jumping rope, uh, 12, squash, you know, so getting into more sport-like activities, 12. Um, so those are vigorous exercises. So, and then from some of the studies that have been done, and again, this was cited in, in anti-cancer, but it's coming from other studies that, that have, you know, collective studies and 
it's a, they usually use the MET as a, a way of calculating things. Um, for breast cancer, it's recommended they're seeing uh, measurable effects and benefits and recommending nine METs per week. With prostate cancer, big jump, right? 30 METs per week. For colon and rectal cancers, 18 METs per week. So just to give you, just kind of just to round it out by giving a parameter around some of the recommendations and just another way of tracking and thinking about um, quantifying your, your overall efforts. We can address questions on that later if you want it. No? So if I vacuum, as I mm -hmm. did mm -hmm. today, and it was Va vacuum is on this page. Oh, no, I got 3.5 met. That's assumed in an hour. hour. Is that right? Per hour. Mm -hmm. so yeah, this is all in the, this is using in the, in the hour. <laughs> well, it's, it's, Well, well, the thing is, we, yeah, we just, but we, we've had a lot of people well, that have been reading different studies and contexts. No, 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 I understand. It, it can be a little confusing. We've just had lately in a lot of our um, at work with different patients, like because of different journals they're reading or things that they're introduced, I think the doctors sometimes are using this in their language. And so um, they've been asking us about it. And so, you know, it, it, it is a little bit, it's just like there are charts that are out there. It's more clinical. It's used more in a clinical setting. So it, it, it means some of the um, some of the uh, programs or equipment in a gym. They have uh, it, it's programmed. You can look at calories or mets. So that's another way. Like if you're walking on a treadmill or an elliptical trainer or something like that. So we do have a lot of people that we work with on a daily basis that are thinking more in this language than than others. So we were just sort of putting it up there in this overall way of talking about exercise and quantifying it. And we didn't know like you know what language that we'd be facing tonight or. So we wanted to put it up there just to, to not overlook it. So um, Joy is, is thinking confusing. she just struck it rich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking of ways to exercise and, and be on your computer at the same time. Ah. And throw in a few stretches or balloon exercises you might have a maid. All right. <laughs> All right. OK. Here we go. How to start. Consult with your health care professional and ask about special considerations. You, sh you should know your health history, and it, in more, situ more often than not, you're going to be asked for a written uh, document from a physician giving you the okay to come to a class or to work with a trainer. At, at the class I teach up at Osher, they take anyone from out anyone, UCSF or not, but everybody has to have that document document signed by their doc, so it, it just allows an opportunity for me to get that support from the medical community and well, as well as Reagan and, and know if there's any contra contradictions or contraindications that I should be aware of as a trainer. Um, start slowly and increase gradually. I I'll, could repeat it ten times and still want to say it some more. Um, what we find a lot is when we start with individuals, particularly if they were really, really active prior, prior to a diagnosis, it's, it's a really hard situation to not get back and do what you were doing two years ago when you were you know, doing centuries on your bike and now I'm telling you to slow down and take it easy. And, and so we kind of have that, that struggle in our training, but it's something that I feel very strongly about because if you're going to go do something stupid, then there's a price to pay with that. And um, so slowly and gradually. And that also goes, uh, Katie Schmidt's work about women in resistance. There was a point, don't do resistance if you have a, uh, if you're potential for lymphedema, don't lift over five pounds. Well, that's not the case. And there is research and data to support that. And she will say, and we can confidently say it here, that as long as you increase gradually and slowly, that, that wins the race. Um, set easy and attain, attainable goals. Um, and then one thing that I am emphatic about is it, you have to have a sense of responsibility in whatever class or activity you're taking is, if it doesn't feel right, do not do it. If you know. Um, when people come to classes, it's easy to get caught up in the enthusiasm and everybody, you know, you don't know if this woman here has been coming for five years and you get caught up with that. And, and again, there, there are prices to pay. So um, that's really important. Listen to your body. And under that, I, I, and I 
also emphasize sharing that with your trainer. There's a, a group of folks out there, maybe Donna's met them along the line. So you're, you're working with them, is there anything I should know about your health history? And they'll tell you this and that and this and that. And you've been working with them for three months and they'll say, oh yeah, by the way, I might have forgotten that I have a pacemaker. <laughs> I call them the PS, the PS people, by the way. So try to share that information again, forth, forthright and first with your, with your instructor. And again, you, you have to consider what you like. If, it, if you're doing stuff you like, chances are you're going to keep doing it and increase that. That might be something soul on your own. I just want to go walk. I don't want to talk to anybody. I, I love groups. I love to, I love to dance. So tap into that and then you have to plan this. This is just like any other activity. Uh, you know, you go to work at nine o'clock so that you should be walking at one and stick to that. It's really a priority. Um, you just gotta roll with that. Um, one of the things that we like to encourage people to do uh, when they're in treatment, if people want to help you out. Is there anything I can do for you? Is there what, call me if I can help you. Well, everybody's kind of in an uncomfortable moment with that. But if you find yourself or some friends of yours that are in that position, go and ask to go for a walk. Everybody's going to benefit. Yeah. The person that you're trying to help is going to benefit. You're going to benefit. It's easier talking if you're walking and moving. So it's a really good tip. I love that one. Yeah, we, um, we've included in here just a weekly activity chart. It's, it's one of the handouts we're, we're giving. But I I'll often work with people, and usually even, you know, kind of in closing, a, or one of the goals I'll try to do in closing a session is to really, like, let's say, let's look at next week. Let's just start with next week, and let's fill out, you know, Sunday through Sunday, and, and let's, let's make a goal. Let's kind of map out what day, you know, what day of the week is it, what are you going to try to do, what time. I mean, you know, so, and, and do your best to stick to this plan. So it really, that's where, you, it, it, you know, changing the, the value and, and overall priority or prioritizing, putting a higher value on exercise and, and really focusing on making time to fold it into your, you know, regular weekly routine. Little things like I'll tell people if you're, you know, social and maybe you're meeting for lunch, we'll suggest that you meet, you know, half an hour early and take a walk with your friend and talk before you sit down to have lunch or have tea or have coffee. Or um, if you're going to an appointment, if you can go early and park your car and walk or if you can stay late and walk, you know, anything, 15, 20 minutes just to um, try to get the heart rate a little bit, just to, to, to kind of mark down that 150 minute target goal per week. Um, walking a dog, uh, I think, you know, sometimes again, that as Jane said, scheduling with, with friends or any sort of accountability model, if it's a class that you attend or making a date with someone that's linked to activity, uh, research is definitely proven and that can help with overall adherence rates and success of, of uh, programs. So that kind of covers that. We'll dive into, uh, uh, so okay. Yeah, you're on target. So on some of the research that we talked about earlier, walking is a, is a, give a chosen activity, and, and I think it's a good one. And I had, saw some hands when we did talk about walking. How many of you, again, have an, a, an active walking program? For those of you that don't. I have a walking apartment. Yeah. Oh, lovely, lovely. Yeah, and it kind of gets you looking at another person that's yeah. trained by you, so you go, oh, I can yeah. do it. Yeah, the accountability. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I like to have as much fun as possible in any way I can in exercise. And one of the things I have found um, particularly valuable in training and working with individuals is to use pedometers. Now, they're not for everyone. But I wear one every day, and I would encourage you to try that. Some of the smartphones have apps already on them, but I'm kind of the keep it simple. So I use this one every day, it's, and I, I brought this along in case anybody's curious. It's an Omron HJ112. I don't work for the company. I don't make a dime. I wish I did, because I would probably be on an island somewhere. <laughs> Not San Juan. Um, so anyway, this is very affordable. It's about 20 bucks, easy to set up. And it tells you the number of steps that you have total. It will tell you the number of cardiovascular steps you have. You have to be moving for 10 minutes or longer to have that register to, as, as that. It has ca calories, I'm not too concerned with that. And it does have distance. It's, pr it's pretty easy to set up. I'd be happy to coach anybody through that. 
Now, I work with people usually once or twice a week, and it's not that I have any trust issues with my clients, but this pedometer has a seven-day memory. <laughs> so you look right over here, and I say, what, here's what you did one day, two day, three, four, five, six, seven. You can't change that. So it's often that we'll take a little look at that. And it's, it's fun to, to it, it, it can be a personal motivator if it's numbers that you like. And what I do with individuals is have them wear it one, the first week and walk as you will. And that way we, we're able to get an average and a baseline. So that's a great place to start setting goals from. Um, uh, there are days it's just not going to happen, but, but we'll keep that in mind. And um, it often will encourage you, if your goal is 7,000 steps and you're at 5,900, oh, or if you're, you know, it just, it just will help, just give you that little extra, well, I'm going to go for two more blocks. And I didn't even mention the fact that this little hand comes out here if you're not walking enough and pinches you right in the butt. <laughs> Who is only. looking for motivation? If only. Yeah. We got it. Um, so that's a handy thing. And it's very valuable to sign up for walks. And you and your friend, your walking partner, probably do that. It's, it encourages you softly to get your work in. And, and it's an easy, play, easy thing to do. You can do it anywhere, right? Pretty much, um, except for when it's pouring rain. But other than that. So that's always where I start in 90% in of the cases, I'm going to start with a, a walking program just to get into the habit of doing something, kind of keeping an eye on that. How's your week going? You got some ups and downs. I didn't do so well yesterday. I only had so many steps, but I'm going to make up for it today. I want to, I'll really want that ice cream cone. That's going to be a few more steps, but you can, it's a bank account that you have essentially so you want to do the checks and balances to keep it balanced somewhat so here we are at strength and I was gonna highlight a couple of things on walking too just with um, interval sometimes I uh, just in way different ways to progress on mm -hmm. on walking so you know if, if one thing is just walking flat whether it's treadmill based or neighborhood uh, you know a track and, and sort of setting small goals I mean ev again we're all coming at this from different angles with different fitness levels but if you're currently doing like half a mile maybe you try next time to do half and a quarter you just kind of that's you know so I usually tell people to use sort of a 10 to 14 day or 10 to 14 yeah, day so a 10 to a, a 10 to 14 day two week period and um, and as a, as a goal setter for adding on and, and trying to progress a program um, little things, if you're walking a, you know, a, a stadium or a track and you had access to stairs, you could walk a lap and then add like a, a flight of stairs or something and that would be a different way to use your muscles and a, a little spike, you know, a little interval spike in a cardio program. Uh, if you have an, live in a hilly area, um, you know, you can again maybe walk flats for a certain amount of time for 10 minutes and then make yourself walk a hill for 60 seconds or two minutes or I'm just throwing out a lot of different ide ideas. You can walk, you can change paces, so sometimes um, like on a track setting, you can walk sort of a normal pace, uh, the straightaways, and then on the curve you pick up your pace. Maybe not, not jog, but even like a faster, kind of a, a, a pretty intense walk, more aggressive walk. Um, Changing your foot patterns too. You might want to try this well, with your friend, but, but to feed the hips in a different plane of motion, walk with your toes out for a few seconds, walk with your toes in, cross over. Yeah. You and do that, yeah, you'll find that you really have a lot more area to walk around when people see you doing that. <laughs> it actually is. <laughs> yeah. People think that. You got the thanks for laughing. <laughs> <laughs> or even just doing that as a, a warm up or something before you go into your longer walk, just changing, you know, pulling the knees up higher than usual, pulling the heel back more. Yeah, cross patterns, crossovers, um, inline walking, that sort of thing um, can be good for balance and just kind of recruiting different neural pathways throughout the bo uh, body. And then not to just be hung up on walking. We like walking because it's, you know, everyone well, not everyone, but most of us can do it. And um, it's a very simple place to start. And it's a simple way to, to, if, you know, to, to track progress and uh, an easy goal to set. Uh, but you know, if you're, if you're gym-based or home-based with equipment, lots of other options for, for cardio. Um, elliptical trainers are nice. They're still weight-bearing. They take the, the impact out of, out of the joints. Um, so sometimes that's recommended. I often, if I'm working with people who have access to a gym and a facility, I suggest you know when you're in the gym, especially if you're walking a lot outdoors, try to focus on using something other than so that you're it's just adding more mix, more variation, less wear and tear on the joints. Um, so you know, using an elliptical trainer, 
uh, use a bicycle as your warm-up or as, as part of your at least one day a week, throw in something different. Um, all of those, you know, if you're cycling outdoors, uh, it, it, so then even that, if like that's your main focus and that's your go-to, well, it'd be great if one day a week or two, a couple of days a week, you'd get off the bike and actually walk and use. It's, it's all about just recruiting different muscle groups, um, uh, less wear and tear on the joints. Um, and, and also, the body adapts over time, so it helps with the overall, um, the body, and just if we continue to do the same old, same old, same old, same old, it becomes quite efficient, and you'll decrease your overall, you know, cal caloric burn over time, so it's nice to throw these new angles, curveballs, at the body to, um, to just, it's all the change up. And that's the point of putting that slide up where we had the five different components, mixing it up, more variation for all of those reasons, just so the body doesn't adapt as quickly, as well as just to help um, protect the body and to decrease the wear and tear over time. So. Strength training. Here we so, go. Yeah, lots of different ways to do it. Uh, you know, you can use your body weight for strength. Um, believe it or not, you can use a balloon for strength, which I think Jane's going to do in just a, a minute or two. Um, if you're if you're gym based or at home based, you know you might have equipment at home. You could have a set of dumbbells at home. These bands will show you a couple of things in a minute, just just to give some ideas. These are um, tubes, resistance tubes, that are you know stretchy. So you can tie them off uh, around something sturdy, loop off you know one end. There's a door jam that's created, so you can slip slip through the door jam and use it. I think Jane can show you that sort of thing. But these are affordable, um, and yet you know you can get pretty creative and then and, and get a good overall like I'm in this airline. full body workout with those. So you put that through, and then you tie it over the door, close the door, and it, it, it creates a nice tension. Or the other end seals off the other end, so you have a, a you know link for resistance and tension. Great for home stuff. Yeah, good for And there are, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, there are several different uh, levels of intensity as far as light versus heavy. The body weight, again, is a, a form of resistance. I mean, even just, you know, these exercises, uh, you know, walking, elliptical training, those sort of things, or cardio as well, but you're using your muscles in a way of, of creating some resistance, especially if you add hills or if you change the intervals, um, do things with a little more intensity uh, or just add resistance on any sort of equipment. Um, you can do things, you know, like push-ups, just using your body weight for, for things like push-ups and squats. You can do lunges, all of those things just to recruit, uh, recruit more muscles to get more strength in the body. Um, so that kind of just covers an, an overall. There are a lot of different ways to get in. Again, it, it, in an, an ideal world, we'd all do resistance and strength training a couple of times a week. Um, I usually tell people, you know, two is your minimum and, and, and aim for three. Um, and uh, or you know find a program like depending on your time maybe it's you have like a program A and a program B and you, you do it you alternate days or something like that Monday through Friday so there are a lot of different ways again it's uh, sometimes just getting creative and shaking it up mixing it up so you're not getting bored and, and burn out on the um, on the fitness program okay so you're gonna go some yeah. you know, some strength exercises move, let's move a little bit so grab your balloons Okay, so I'd like for you to sit at the edge of your chair. Oh, chair exercise. Okay, Joy. So the, the first, first thing is really easy. All I want you to do is just toss that balloon up in the air. Try toss it up again. Just want to yeah, see how, do it. how much we can Anywhere. move here. Oh, trying to play volleyball with me. Okay, so if I can get you to sit at the edge of your chair, sit up nice and tall, stack your vertebrae up. I want you to bring that balloon over right in front of your pectoral range. Bring your elbows out, your palms are on the balloon, and I want you just to press. She'll give you $100 if you pop it. I will. <laughs> She's stealing my stuff. I thought you were going to be the one. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do a little chest press set. So with your elbows out, pressing into the balloon, and exhaling as you're doing so. Let's go at one. Inhale, exhale at two. Keep going, exhale at three. So this obviously is meeting several different levels of strength, right? Joy, how you doing? Four. Look at her. She got what she wanted. She wanted chair exercises. Give me your address. I'll come and visit. Here we go. Five. Back to my computer. And six. <laughs> And seven, I love the breathing, and eight, let's go at nine, last one at ten. Feel like you did something? Not too shabby, huh? 
<laughs> now I want you to, when you're sitting at the edge of the chair, and those of you that have skirts on, I just want to try this for you. I want you to put the balloon between your knees. And you could do this sitting on a wall if you were so inclined you wanted to work a little bit harder. So here you are here. Okay, so I want everybody to squeeze. We're going to do 10 squeezes. So again, exhaling as you're squeezed. So let's go at one. Squeeze only as far as you're comfortable with. Two, if you have any injuries and, and it doesn't feel right, don't do it. Here we go at three. Remember, you're blowing out. And four. Good job. Here we go, five. You're in the gym. And six, or at home. And seven, how easy is this? Let's go at eight. What about nine? Dead ringer at 10. Good job, give yourselves a hand. Now use your balloon. Yeah. 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 Joy at the computer. All at day the long. Computer. <laughs> so, I'm going to try a little something and see how this works. I know we don't have a lot of space, but for those of you that are sitting and we just want to, you can bend down. And these are on your list, by the way. This is just for Holly. So you're going to reach down here, toss that balloon up. Okay, now, if you have the room and you feel confident with the space, you're going to bend down, tap, and then stand up and toss. And then sit down again and tap. And then again, stand up and toss as you're exhaling. And then inhale down as you tap. And then exhale again as you toss. Let's keep going. Inhale down and tap. And exhale up and toss. Inhale back and tap. And exhale up and toss. Let's go for three more. Inhale back and tap and exhale up and toss. Last one. Inhale back and tap. You can still talk. And exhale up and toss. All right, so now we're going to get just a little bit of rotation in. So you can be sit seated or stand. You can bring the balloon out as far as you want. Watch out for your neighbor. And then all I want you to do is go rotate to the right Rotate to the left. You can stand up if you'd like to. Rotate to the right. Now you had a lo lovely idea coming up here where there's more space. And rotate to the left. Let's go for three more. Rotate to the right. And rotate yeah. to the left. Really there you go. You. If you're feeling constrained with the space, you can simply bring that balloon in closer and still rotate. There's benefit there. And let's go for last one. Rotate to the right. <laughs> and rotate to nice. the left <laughs> and then give yourself a hand again <laughs> not too shabby right okay so then we're going to just go left and rotate so here we go again joy join me you're at the left and you're going to rotate up to the right inhale and down at the left Exhale and as you rotate up. Now, if you want to give it a little toss and you have the room, feel free to do that. So a little woo. You guys aren't making much noise. And rotate. Woo. <laughs> Let's do two more. Inhale and woo. <laughs> Last one. And woo. <laughs> All right. Now we got to do the other side. <laughs> right to left. Woo. <laughs> Inhale oh. down. Oh my oh, gosh. And exhale oh, up. Last three. Let me hear some real noise. Woo! Last two. Inhale and exhale. And we got one more to go. Right and left. <laughs> Holy moly. Once again, I'm seeing smiles all over the place. Good job. A little exercise pro. Who knew you were going to come and have a workout tonight? Pretty good stuff, right? So we got the bands, we got the weights. Any, anybody have any quick questions about resistance? Yes, ma'am. Question about weights uh, in terms of how much weight is necessary. So you know, do you use eight pound dumbbells? You know, should you increase and progress? And should you use different weights for different, different body weights? Yeah, I mean, to address 
address sure, it. Go ahead. Um, yeah, one of the things around typically around just a, a beginning weight program, it's recommended to target all the major muscle groups and to do uh, a couple of sets, uh, you know, 10 to 12 exercises or something, depending. You can add, you know, more than that, but that's sort of the basic. So, I'm, are you there? I mean, are, are you doing? Yeah, but I've been lit for a while. I just, you know, wonder if there's a couple of eye factors in general. Okay. If that's all you're using and that you've been doing it for a while, you got to crank it up. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it, it just listen to the body, too. I mean, because sometimes in, in going up, so your next step would probably be to 10 pounds, right? And so then in that, um, you know, how does it feel as you're adjusting? Some of the exercises might still be, you know, just kind of easy. You're breezing through them a couple, depending on the joint and the muscle. Like, is there, are you doing, like, big muscle groups or using some of the smaller isolated muscle groups? So there's a little bit of that, like, you know, give and take. I mean, listen to the body. How do you respond? Um, but you ultimately want to get to a point where with those sets of exercise, you know, you are feeling a little fatigue and tiredness in the muscles as you use them. I mean, that's the, the best way to continue to gain, gain strength and progre progress. And then the other thing is, have you been doing the same program for, um, yeah, so then you might want to think about change the program. And, and maybe, like, what I usually do with people in that situation is say, okay, so this is your program A. You've been doing it for a while, so now let's start program B. And maybe you alternate, you know, and then you get this nice mix of, you know, you've got a lot of different exercises, but you're changing days. So that's one way. That if, I mean, if you really like what you're doing, fine, but think about adding an, another routine. Um, yeah. Can yes. you repeat the question? Oh, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. No problem. So that question was, um, she was asking specifically about weight program with dumbbells, and, and um, she was using eight-pound dumbbells and not sure when to progress, how much weight to progress, you know, that sort of thing. So. We were just trying to address more specifically that. But again, when finding out just through the conversation that the, you know, she's been doing the same program for a long time and, um, and using the same amount of weight for a long time. So we're definitely saying it would be to your advantage to you know, go to the 10-pound dumbbells and then to maybe consider adding a new, a new program. So moving into flexibility, and we can come back to questions if you have them. Moving into flexibility, that can be done every day, as you may recall. Now, you guys did some flexibility with me just now, right? So in your balloon handout, there's one that talks about uh, uh, wall stretch, and this is particularly good if you need range of motion in your upper body. And you're, at, let's say you're at home, you have the balloon from when you came to this great lecture at Stanford. So you're standing in front of here, and all you're going to do is keep your belly pulled in. And I just wanted to make sure that you all saw what this, so when you read about it, you'll go, oh yeah, that's what she was doing. So you're, you're coming up with the balloon as, as high as you can. You're pulling your belly in, and then it can become a core stabilization exercise. Now you're stretching your whole body here, so there's a great amount of value here. It's very easy. Now you're going to go up to the left, so you're going to go as left as you can. Now your stretch goes all the way down your body, not too shabby there. Now you're going to go on up to the right. Same thing's going to happen. How simple. You got a wall, you got a balloon. There's a tremendous need for um, stretching after surgical interventions. We use rollers a great amount of the time. I think every woman that, or man that has an upper body surgical intervention should have to be going through a class to use this kind of stuff. I always like to add, too, that we live in a forward world. If you think about it, you know, we drive cars, we talk on phones, we work on computers. I stand at podiums that are smaller than me. You know. So, I mean, you know, tall people are looking down a lot. Um, forward, forward, I mean, so many things. We cook, we might play with children, we do gardening, whatever. So we're doing so many things in front of us. So one of the great advantages of this, and there are a lot of other ways that you can do it, but a lot of these range of motion exercises just to open the body and to try to, you know, especially with the shoulder girl, to, to just bring more, to open the chest muscles, strengthen the back muscles, but to, to really create a better postural, you know, effect and sort of being in the world. So I'm going to, I'm going to help Reagan train after she, all right. Okay, so uh, yeah, you're, you can't you're, see you. you're really tight because you're working at a desk and, you're, and you need to get opened up here. So you're using a roller. All you're doing is dropping shoulders down, opens your chest. Sorry, if you need to stand up to take a look, Maybe you should do it on the wall because the video oh, can't, the video can't get you either. Because you can get, so imagine, I mean, there are two, but sometimes the, the beginning wave, people are really restricted or if a foam roller seems too challenging, if you can't get down the floor or something like that, we'll put people Good against the wall to, to begin. But just know that position she just showed you on the floor, you know, head, head supported by one end, hip supported by the other end. So you can still, I mean, the idea here is that it, it takes you six inches away from, you know, whether you're on the floor, six inches off of the floor, six inches away from the wall. So it allows you to move. It gives, it gives more range with your, your movement. You can use your little toe 
You can, yes. You can use a rolled towel. You can use a yoga mat, a rolled yoga mat, and use that under. Um, I, I, I've even had people that have gone to Home Depot and got a PVC piping and put a towel over it for you comfort. You can use canes. Um, and and if, you, if you aren't able to get down on the floor, and some people aren't, you can even do standing stuff. You can use golf clubs. You can use yardsticks. But look at that. I'm opening that left shoulder, coming on back. Here we go again. Opening up the right shoulder. All kinds of stuff here. Can sweep around. Look at that. Wow. Woo! <laughs> there, um, uh, you know, it, just uh, for the sake of time, I know we want to get to some, uh, allow questions uh, in a few minutes here, but um, on our website, we've just sort of launched a new project, and we've got uh, currently, I mean, I, I think there are probably, I know, 30 to 50 videos, and some of these foam roller exercises are on there. It's on Sunflower Wellness. I want, it, it might not be launched yet, so you might want to give it a week or two. We're currently launching a whole new website, but one of our latest projects has been doing videos. Jane's in some of them, I'm in some. We've, we've, we've had other people involved. Um, there's a lot of stuff about the breath. There's, uh, you know, uh, the foam rollers mentioned. We have exercises with the TheraBand, so we're trying to cover a range of activities, and you could go on and watch a, a demonstration, and then, you know, uh, just a way to learn. We've got things with dumbbells and, and I think, physio balls. So, Again, if it's not there this week or next week, it, I, I know that they're really pushing to get it out by the first of next month. So that's just a follow-up on it. ideas. It's, uh, we're going to give it to you at the end, and we also can give you a card. And you can, but it's, yeah, we'll, it's on our final screen. So. so we have the handout for balance. So I think we're going to, in the essence of timeliness, we're just going to ask you to take a look at that. But anytime you can put yourself in a situation where two feet aren't on the floor, whatever that might be, that's really advantageous. Grocery, stand in the grocery line, you can do that. Brush your Brushing teeth. Brushing your teeth, all of those kinds of things. It's yeah, simple. Oh, Every, if you, those of you who can, stand up, stand up. We'll do one, just very quick, simple. Um, so stand up for a second, just to show weight transference, so just a shift of, of body weight. Um, so just if you take a step and stand on your left foot, try to lift your right foot. And then take a step to your right and lift your left foot. Try to lift and hold sort of a slow one, two, three count step, right? Stepping over, hold, and step. And then you can progress. And so that's just transferring your weight, lateral, lateral transference, shifting from, from side to side. You can make this a little bit harder by, by you know, making it more of a, a hop or a jump or creating, uh, increasing the distance between the two feet. Again, so you kind of find your place and what you're comfortable with. But that's a really simple thing that can be done anywhere with just your body weight. You can also do that exercise by stepping forward with one foot, lifting the back foot, and then stepping back, lifting the front foot. So my right foot's my forward foot now. And then my left foot's my back foot. And you could change that and go left foot as your front <coughs> foot, right foot as your. So again, just, just transferring weight with these different you know, motions, um, side to side, front and back. Uh, it can help increase uh, ankle stability. Um, also can just help with you know, uh, <coughs> the balance and, and fall prevention, that sort of thing. And the woman with the eight pound weight, you can even make, if you still have the eight pound weight and you're still doing that, you can do it on one leg. Uh, that, oh, yeah. That's going to change the dynamics a little bit and keep it interesting, too. Um, so we're into, into re relaxation and breathing. And one thing I was going to mention, just because I know this came up earlier, Pilates, yoga, all these things, all great. You know, the, the, the big point here we want to make is, you know, variation and, and really finding things that work for you. Maybe it's, you know, I've never taken a Pilates class, but I've heard a lot about it. So trying to find something in your community or, you know, that, that works for you or getting, getting advice. I understand you've got Pilates run through, through here, correct? I mean, we, we were introduced to you earlier, so there's a, a class that, that's run through the, the center here. Um, but in some, in some of these exercises, like Pilates, I'd say, you know, you do a lot of things for flexibility, but you also do a lot for strength and sometimes balance, depending on if it's, you know, equipment or floor-based. Um, with yoga, you're, you're doing all of that. You know, some of the yoga classes are even cardio. You know, they, they have cardio intensity levels if they're flow classes or some of the more advanced classes. So, um, yeah, just, again, we just really wanted to, to point out just the variation in your overall plan and program on a weekly basis and, and the, the true benefits of that for motivational purposes, just for longer-term adherence and for the, all the good benefits of the body. Relaxation. Well, glad you asked. <laughs> you guys have a balloon here. So my question to you is, does anybody worry in this room ever? <laughs> no. Anybody get a show of hand? Heck no. Oh, yeah, all right. Truth <laughs> be known. All right, so I, there are you know different breathing techniques for relaxation, and I'm sure some of you utilize them on a regular basis. I just wanted to show you this one today because I think it's, it's kind of fun and might add a nice close to this. So 
uh, deep belly or diaphragmatic breathing can be very, va very valuable. It, it can help interrupt, I love this term, it can interrupt toxic worry. <laughs> so so um, when you're doing the, the, the deep breathing, your blood pressure can reduce, your heart rate can reduce, your system can increase the oxygen, and they all ultimately end up at a, at a calming effect. So I would like for us to, to use these balloons and do a practice of the deep breathing. So if you, can, if you can join me, that's great. If you can't, I just want you to make the essence of breathing. So I'd love for you no, nothing more than take a nice deep breath through the nose, and then we're going to blow these balloons up. So inhale and OK. Nice deep breath. Inhale through the nose. And inhale again through the nose. We got two more to go if you can. Inhale again and exhale. Last time. Holy moly. That's for Holly. We did it. So, so, yeah. So, I'm in trouble right from the start. So, just to, to support this exercise and to remind you of, of the value of that, just keep this in your pocket or put it on your dresser. And when you take a look at it, remember this experience today. And then do some deep breathing after that. <laughs> that was good. Good, good. So, <laughs> nice job on the balloons. And then um, we were, if I can get a, a click here, let's see. Oh, there we go. So we, we were lucky enough to find uh, Egbert on the advice of his doctor, start slowly on his exercise program by pumping balloons. <laughs> so just, just to throw in the, the link of humor there. Um, and then we, yeah, Jane was so happy to find the smiley face balloons just to, as a happy reminder. Um, these are just words from, you know, these are, uh, a lot of people we've worked with, with over the years, they've, they're sending in different testimonials, different ways, but you know, words from people that we work with, and you know, er, they're the ones doing the work. We provide a little bit of guidance, and we try to <coughs> encourage and motivate, but uh, uh, you know, I will read, exercise has helped me enormously since cancer treatment. In particular, it has all but eliminated the chemo brain that was so distressing to me. The classes I attend have me feeling healthier than I have in decades. Um, so some pretty nice, you know, um, Nice words, and, and, and we're so proud of so many of the people that we've connected with and worked over the years. Wow. Yeah, that's, uh, and uh, I know that exercise is key to my recovery, to regaining my strength, to my emotional well-being, and to doing all that I can to stay cancer-free and avoid a recurrence. I want to live a long and healthy life for both myself and for my kids. I really believe that exercise is what will help me achieve all of this. And you know, we, these are also, on our website, we've got a, a, a log of testimonials and a couple of videos and photos and that sort of thing. So we'll move on to get to the, um, the questions. This is just the, 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 we mentioned this earlier, it's the tracking log. Um, so again, encourage you to, to, you know, at least maybe, maybe one thing you could do, a little bit of homework after tonight is go home, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow, um, sit down and really try to map out a plan for yourself for the next seven days, you know, and, and, and write down maybe what you've already been doing and then think of, you know, is there a way you can add one more day to this routine or how could you change it or tweak it slightly to make it more, you know, more of an advantage to you and your overall health. Um, Jack LaLanne, we love him. We love this quote. The only way we can hurt the body is not use it. Inactivity is the killer. And remember, it's never too late. So we felt like that was a, a great closing slide and a good way to sort of summarize a lot of what we're trying to show tonight. And then, of course, just to throw one more humorous, he didn't even know it was on strength, <laughs> broke down the gates of heaven <laughs> as he passed away this year. I think most of you know. And, um, and then just our final slide here, we're saying thank you. And that's uh, the link uh, here, Sunflower Wellness, w it's sunflowerwellness.org. Um, our mission is, is simple. It's to help as many people as possible living with cancer get exercise. So, uh, and that's our, our, our emails and a phone number. And um, thank you.